All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and many salutations to you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots. Whatever your lot is, fulfilling your lot in righteousness, whether you're a prophet, a believer, a help, whatever the case is, greetings and salutations unto you. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the spirit. Lord's willing here, this lesson is edifying. All right. Hey, the most high is going to jack the heathen up, man. <laughs> the most high is going to jack the heathen up. I was doing some studying, just doing some reading in uh, the book of Samuel. And um, I stumbled across something and I'm going to go into it here in a second, but um I thought it was very interesting, and um, the Spirit's telling me to uh, to put this here on wax. All right, when you read the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter, it goes into um, the call of Abraham, our father, our patriarch. All right, now the Most High had made an oath unto our father Abraham. All right, and when you start from the top and read down, all right, it really it's really the first few verses. All right. It gives him a promise. All right. In regards to um, how his seed are promised to be blessed and those that come against his seed are promised to be cursed. OK, now, obviously, we had went through the curses and you read about those curses in the books in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, starting at verse uh, really just reading from verse 15 all the way on down. It goes into the curses. All right. That um, we're going to have to go through because we have forsaken the way of the Lord through time. All right. And it also goes into when you uh, continue on the next few chapters in Deuteronomy, how the curses that befell upon us are going to fall upon our enemies. All right. And ultimately, all of that goes back to the oath that was given unto our father Abraham as pertaining to the second part of what I just said. The curses that befell upon us are going to fall upon our enemies. The Most High is going to jack these heathen up. I'm going to start at Genesis 12 and 1, and I'm going to read down to verse 3. It says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And that land uh, later on will become the land of Israel, but um, at that time it was called the land of Canaan. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. All right, now has not Esau Edom, the self proclaimed so called white man, has he not cursed us? All right, does he not curse us daily with his policies that he pushes, with his lies, what he's done when he came over here to America? He's cursed us for hundreds of years. And the Most High had allowed this devil to fulfill his role of being a demon. And part of that goes into a, a measurement that we had to fulfill. All right. We had to serve captivity under a point of time. All right. And then our captivity was going to be lifted. And we're in a process where our captivity is being lifted. And now what we're seeing now is the start of the curse of Esau Edom. And this is on the start. It's going to get a lot worse. We can talk about COVID-19 being a plague is man-made. Yeah, it's a plague because the Lord put the spirit on these devils to create it. But they haven't really truly experienced the plague sent straight from the heavens. And they about to very soon. These devils are about to be cursed beyond, beyond comprehension. It says, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So the main point that I wanted to tackle is the fact that those that cursed us are going to be cursed. All right. And I said um, I was going to I was reading and, and doing some reading and um, the spirit moved me to go. Ah, that's the spirit. I opened right up to it. Wow. OK, but uh, the spirit's telling me to go into this right here. All right. In regards to the book of uh, first Samuel. All right. Because when you read this here, it's very interesting because when you look at Israel, Israel is the most high's possession. All right. So the most high's possession 
was tossed into a land, into a foreign land among the heathen, and his possession was abused in this foreign land. Okay, matter of fact, before I read this in Samuel, I'm going to read this here in the book of uh, Zechariah. It says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Okay, for behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. Okay, and that's uh, to a degree that's a precept what we just read, because as we were sent into a foreign land and we were made a spoil. All right, little did they know they spoiled the apple of the Most High's eye, being Israel, and now they're going to be a spoil. Going back to what was written of in Genesis twelve. All right. It says, curse be that curseth thee. OK, now I said I was going to read this here in the book of Samuel. First Samuel, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to start at first Samuel five and one. And remember, all right, because I said Israel is the most high's prized possession. Look what the most high had done to our enemies, the Philistines, when they had taken his prized possession, which was the Ark of the Covenant. This is 1 Samuel 5 and 1. And the Philistines took the Ark of the Most High and brought it from Eben Ezra unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the Ark of the Most High, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. All right. And for those of you all that don't know who Dagon is, Dagon is an idol that those heathen, namely those, those Canaanites, those Philistines worshipped. All right. And really, the word Dagon is how you say the word fish in the Hebrew. So it was a fish God that they were worshiping. OK, so they had taken it pretty much into a shrine. All right. Of Dagon. That's where they had taken the Ark of the Covenant and the Ark of the Covenant. Um, pretty much what what was within that Ark was the the tables of stone, which were the laws, Aaron's rod that budded and some of the manna that had fell from heaven when we were in the wilderness. OK, and we had we had carried that all throughout the wilderness around the time of Moses. All right. And um, when you when you read this here in Samuel, all right, around the time of Eli, who was a judge right before Samuel judged, the Ark of the Covenant had dwelt in Shiloh. OK, that dwelt in Shiloh and those Philistines had taken the Ark of the Covenant to for the most high to fulfill a will that he had told Eli and he had told Eli all right, that his seed wasn't going to live off anymore. All right, and he was going to kill his two wicked sons, being Hophni and Phineas, who were priests, but they were doing abominable acts. Okay, so the Most High had Eli's two children killed, and the Most High had those Philistines to take the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, now this is what happened when the Philistines had taken the Ark of the Covenant. They had placed it over there in their shrine where they worshiped Dagon. Okay. And it says, when the Philistines took the Ark of the Most High, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth before the Ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. Notice the Most High is so slick how he did that. The next morning when they walked in there, they seen this statue or this idol of Dagon fell to his face in front of the Ark of the Covenant, all right? Like it was given, like it was paying homage to it, showing, <laughs> like this idol was showing that it wasn't the true God, but Yahweh is the true God. So he had that idol fall to its face. And when they walked in, that statue was face down in front of the Ark of the Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant, okay? So it says, and when they arose early on the, the, the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face, to the ground before the ark of the Lord and the head of Dagon and both palms of his hands were cut off upon the thresholds. Only the stump of Dagon was left before him, was left to him. And it was very spiritual that the most high had both of Dagon's hands cut off. All right. His palms of his hands were cut off. All right. Because also when you go into Dagon, Dagon is the so-called God of also planting and husbandry, husbandry. Fertility of the land. All right. And when you go into planting and husbandry, which goes to planting seeds, your hands are needed to do that. 
All right. So the most high had Dagon's hands, which was the source of his so-called power, broken off. All right. Face down back into the Ark of the Covenant. OK, it was very spiritual how the most high had done that. And they realized that when they walked in there. So check out what else the Lord had done unto them. OK, mind you, this is the Ark of the Covenant. This is the most highs. This is a prized possession. All right. That was tossed into a foreign land. Now, as this prized possession was tossed into this foreign land, look what the Most High had done to those that dwelt in that land. All right. Look what the Most High had done to our enemy because they had taken his prized possession. All right. If you see where I'm getting that in this lesson, it says, but the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod and he destroyed them and smote them with emrods, which goes into hemorrhoids. All right. Even Ashdod and the coast thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, the Ark of the Most High, the God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon, our God. They sent them, therefore, and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, what shall we do with the Ark of God of Israel? And they answered, let the Ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the Ark of God of Israel about thither which was Gath. And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And they had hemorrhoids or emrods in their secret parts. Therefore, they sent the ark of the God, Salakia, they sent the ark of God to Ekron. And it came to pass as the ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out saying, they have brought the ark of God, the God of Israel, to us to slay us and our people. So everywhere, all right, everywhere that the ark of the covenant was sent to, all right, those people suffered torment and destruction and despair. Okay, every location that it was moved to. All right. And this was also a seven month process. It wasn't just quick. It wasn't just another day they had sent it. This was almost this is a little over a half of a year where the Ark of the Covenant kept being traveled and, and, and located from one area to another. Okay. So it says in verse 11, So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the Ark of the God of Israel and let it go again to his own place, that it slay us not and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men that died not were so smitten with emeroids and the cry of the city went up to heaven. So I wanted to read through that whole chapter real quick. And it's ironic. I didn't even know I read through the whole chapter. OK, but uh, but yeah. All right. So it was a uh, very heavy when you go into this everywhere that this possession of the most high had went. They were cursed. Destruction was upon them. They were cursed within a very foul fashion. All right. To the point where they were confused. Now, again, when you look at the Ark of the Covenant, all right, and how that was a prized possession, it was something that was held very dearly unto the Most High. And really, the, the Ark of the Covenant was more so just a um, similitude of uh, ultimately Yahweh Shai. OK, because what was in there was the, the staff that budded, which Yahweh Shai is called the branch. The tables of stone were there. All right. Which goes into the law. OK which Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. And also you had the manna, which Yahweh Shai referenced. He, he, he represents the manna from heaven. All right. And that is within us. That is within us. So why Yahweh Shai said, if any man love my father and myself, all right, and keep his word, my father and myself shall make our abode or dwelling within them. So you look at how the Ark of the Testimony is a prized possession to the Most High. You look at Israel. All right. Namely, the elect and how the elect are very dear unto the most high. It's even written of in the book of wisdom of Solomon, in the fourth chapter, that he hath respect unto his chosen. And as we were taken into these different areas of captivity throughout history. And now look where we're at right now. America. OK, we're at America. Even 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 around the time of 70 A.D. When you go into the history. All right. When we fled into Africa. All right. Around the time of uh, 66 to 70 A.D., when Jerusalem was being seized by um, Titus 
Well, Vespasian and Domitian. Okay, those Israelites, we fled into Africa, but there was a large number of us that were taken captive and were killed off. And when you go into that history, those Romans were catching hell around that time. The Lord was plaguing them. OK, and this was around a time of what's called the Flavian dynasty. OK, and the most High was plaguing them. All right. Now we're over here in America. We've been serving captivity for 400 plus years. And even for the for the for you brothers and you sisters that might be in different areas of the world. All right. That have been a byword and a reproach. Just know we know this already. But for those newer ones that are coming in. All right. And that might feel like, dang, they keep getting over on us. Man, these devils keep having their foot on our neck. It's all good. The Most High is about to jack these heathen up. <laughs> He's about to jack these heathen up, man. And when you read it in the book, of, I've just, I read it early in 1 Samuel 5, going into Dagon and how Dagon was moved. Dagon was moved when the presence of the Lord was there. All right. Just imagine when the chariots come. All right. That idol was moved within the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. All right. Just imagine when the chariots come. Matter of fact, that leads me to this real quick, just as another example. It's the book of Isaiah 19 and 1. The burden of Egypt. When you go into that word burden. Hey, when the Ark of the Testimony was over there in the land of the Philistines, it was a burden to those Canaanites. OK. When you go into that word burden here, that word in the Hebrew is that word is pronounced Masha. And it says load, bearing, burden, lifting. All right. Uh, pretty much just a, a bearing or a weight. All right. So it says the burden or the weight of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, which goes into those chariots and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. All right. Now, this Egypt right here is spiritually talking about America. All right. But you notice it said the idols of Egypt were moved at his presence, just like that idol of Dagon was moved at the presence of the Lord. <laughs> so when the Lord comes back and gets us, he's going to make it known and all these idols are going to be moved. This whole place is, is being moved right now. And the idol doesn't only have to be a statue no more. An idol is anything that's set up on high. That's worship pretty much. And all that's being moved right now. Okay. All that's being moved. Showing that it doesn't hold any power. These celebrities, they call you got Cardi B smoking three cigarettes, you know, at, at, at a time because she's stressed out and she's posted it on social media. She's an idol. All right. I mean, look at these people. You got celebrities dying. Okay. Look at football. The, the, the stands are empty in NFL. They had to play these basketball games in a bubble. All right. These idols are being moved at the presence of the Lord. And that's and that's not even including when Yahweh Shah comes back on that chariot. All right. Because just when the Ark of the Testimony was over there among those Philistines, those Philistines were cursed. They were cursed. Just wait when Yahweh Shah comes back with his chariots. The Lord's going to bring a pestilence again in a very severe way. And that actually leads me to this as well. In the book of um, Habakkuk. And I read this earlier in a lesson I did earlier today. But the Spirit's telling me to, to go back into this because uh, I want to point this out. Because I read earlier in Isaiah 19 that the Lord is coming in that cloud and these idols shall be moved at his presence. Okay. Just as Dagon was moved and there was pestilence that happened afterward to, to the heathen. Okay. This is Habakkuk 3 and 4. It says, and his brightness was as the light, and he had horns coming out of his hands, which those horns represent plagues of light. I'm sorry, not plagues. I'm sorry about that. It represents um, beams of light or lasers. And there was the hiding of his power. Check this out. Before him went the pestilence, and the burning coals went forth at his feet. All right. I'm going to read that in the NLT. Habakkuk 3 and 5. Pestilence marches before him. Plagues follows close behind him. Close behind. Now, jumping back to 1 Samuel 5, going into the Ark of the Covenant, that's what happened. After them idols was moved, there was pestilence and plagues that followed those Canaanites. Everywhere that everywhere the Ark of the Covenant went, plagues followed afterwards. 
And really, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, that was on a low level. All right. Just wait till your house shot comes back. When I read in Genesis 12 where it said, curse be that curses thee. Oh, we getting ready to see them curses. Just wait and see what the Lord about to do to these people. <laughs> Just wait and see what the Lord about to do to these heathen, to these devils. All right. You think them hemorrhoids is bad that he gave them to those those Hamites, man. That's that's only a piece. That's that's a laugh. That's a giggle compared to what the Most High is getting ready to do, starting with Esau, Edom. OK, and that actually leads me to the last precept that I want to bring out in the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter. Bear with me one sec. Baruch chapter four. And the main point is in verse uh, 32. Let's see here. Hold on, Shalaki, y'all. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 31. Miserable are they that afflict thee and rejoice at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons because we are a prized possession. And with us being a prized possession, as Zechariah put it, the apple of the most high's eye. All right. The people that have taken us, these Edomites that have taken us are getting ready to be a spoil. All right. Now, it wasn't immediately how it happened. Again, the most high deals with uh, portions. All right. Certain measurements have to be fulfilled. OK, so the measurement we had to be over here in America was. 400 plus years. And now we're seeing this judgment transpire, just like when we were in ancient Egypt. All right. The measurement that had to be fulfilled was 400 plus years. All right. 400 years. And then the Lord started plaguing Egypt. All right. The Ark of the Covenant had to be over there with them Canaanites for those seven months. All right. And then they started. Well, really, it was earlier, but them seven months after that, that's when they had brought it back over there to, uh, to, to, to the land, to us. OK, so again, when you look at us being the most High's prized possession, we have to constantly remember that the most High's going to fight for us. And he is. All right. The most High's going to fight for us. OK, and he's going to tear these people up, bro. The scriptures say miserable are the cities which thy children serve. When you look outside, look at all the uproars taking place. Look at all the fighting that's going on, all the protesting. And then sit back and think that that's only a small inkling of what's getting ready to happen to Babylon. Only a small inkling. I read earlier in Habakkuk 3, all right, when Yahweh well, really, when you go into the coming of Yahweh I said plagues followed them. <laughs> These people are going to be plagued in their mind, in their flesh, in all manner. Okay? And it ain't going to be nothing that they can do that can stop what the Most High is getting ready to bring. All right. Verse 33 says, for as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad at thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure. It says long to endure, which shows you the Lord deals with measurements. OK, it, it long to endure. Meaning we had to be afflicted for a long period of time, but that don't mean the most high forgot. That don't mean he just changed like Christianity like to say. Christianity like to go into how the Lord just changed. Okay, no. He allowed that to happen just so they could get even prouder and believe that there ain't going to be nothing that's going to happen to them. Okay, the Lord judged them Canaanites quick. With the Ark of the Testimony, judged them quick. The most high allowed these devils to go on a long period of time and they pride. And when he gets them, it's going to be all the more dreadful. Okay. It says for fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure. And she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. And when you go into that scripture there, that's really um, the inhabitant of devils. That's a precept to Revelation 18, where it goes into how every hateful and foul bird is going to be left in the midst of Babylon, meaning just desert animals after the nukes come. All right, because that fire is really just going into the nukes that's going to hit America, which is Mystery Babylon. And later on, when the kingdom's already established and everything, after the fire proceeds, uh, or not proceeds, but 
succeeds, I guess. All right. When it recedes, Salakia, when the fire recedes. All right. Later on in time, it's going to be different beasts that's going to dwell over here. And that's what that's going into where it says devils. OK, but going into the point, man, miserable are these people that had taken the prized possession of the Lord. All right. And I wanted to go into that example in first Samuel five in regards to the Ark of the Covenant being taken, which was a prized possession and how those Canaanites were being afflicted and plagued and destroyed. All right. And how much more dreadful it's going to be to these devils, these Edomites that had taken us because we are a prized possession of the most high. All right. We are a very high prized possession. We're high value to the most high. So the most high is going to destroy these people in a more dreadful fashion than he had destroyed those Canaanites for taking the Ark of the Covenant. OK. So rejoice. Because this place is finished and we finna receive our reward. OK. And I'm going to end it off on that. Lord's willing. That was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor and glory. To Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect, fulfilling your lots and sincerity and in truth. Shalom.